Good evening, everybody. Thank you once again for joining us in another time in God's presence for the Bible study. This is Christ Apostolic Church, Grace View Digital Church. We thank the name of the Lord for the mighty things that He has been doing through this vision that He's doing presently and that He will keep doing in our life and in everybody that is a supporter of this vision. Thank you once again for joining us, everyone. Um, we would like to know wherever you are joining us from. Please do well to let us know in the comment section. Um, we know that the Lord will keep blessing you as you join us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Before we go into the Bible study proper, I want us to say um, a short word of prayer. As we do normally, I want us to say a short of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time again in your presence. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for the grace that you have so much released upon our life. Thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you for the gift of salvation. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Thank you for protection, your provision. Thank you for always shining your light upon our darknesses. We pray the Lord that which you are said to do in our life this evening, you will see to completion in the name of Jesus. You will teach us your word tonight in the name of Jesus. Speak to us, Father, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the entrance of your word give it light. Father, let your light flood our life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. At the end of today's praise time in your presence, we pray the Lord, your name only will be glorified in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Uh, once again, I want to thank every one of us for coming. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are grateful. We are grateful and we are happy to have you here. The Lord bless you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. So our title or the topic we will be considering this week, um, today especially, is the Sabbath and its significance. The Sabbath and its significance. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. Open your Bible wherever we are. This is a Bible study. Yes, this is a Bible study. Let's open our Bible to Genesis chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. It says, Thus say, Thus the heavens and the heads were finished, and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because that in it he had rested from all his work which god created and made which god did what created and made so they are telling us here from according to the book of genesis chapter 2 that god worked first seventh uh, first second third to the sixth day and verse 3 says and god blessed the seventh day and God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. Now, the concept of the seventh day is as far as God is concerned. The seventh day. There is nothing like the seventh day before God. Before the advent of creation, there is nothing like the seventh day. So, when we say the day of rest, the day of Sabbath, it is not because we just cooked up something. It is because that was the day God chose to rest from all his work. If our adventure God has said, okay, first day we continue working, second day, third day we are working, seventh day said we work, and on the eighth day, what am I saying here is that the 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 importance attached to the seventh day was because God made it so. Simple. Oh, fifth day it could have been, could have been the sixth day. God will have created everything, created man on the fifth day, and made it, ah, sixth day, I want to rest, and then everybody will just go with it, of course. That's where we all took our cue from. Of course, there are so many contemplations and belief systems about, okay, is this supposed to be Monday, is this supposed to be Wednesday, is this supposed to be Sunday, is this supposed to be Saturday? But we all know that, irrespective, irrespective of the day it fell on, Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, the concept is, on the seventh day 
starting from the time you you count whatever your your first day is on the wednesday maybe your first day of the week is wednesday the seventh day is a day of rest so the the the, the importance attached here is not that sunday is the day they say ah on, on sunday god rested no as far as creation was concerned there was only like a sunday when god was creating the heavens and the earth so we attached the sunday to the seventh day god rested and some people attach saturday to the seventh day god rested so the concept there is on the seventh day of rest on the seventh day of rest and as far as our system is concerned especially in nigeria where we know that okay the first day of the week um is sunday then monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday some people say take it like that that means sabbath is on is on saturday yes some people go to church on, on saturday and some of us that takes monday as the first day of the week monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday is the day of rest is the day of rest so god blessed the seventh day so it was not about maybe it was sunday or monday or tuesday it was because god blessed that particular day and set it apart to be the day of rest so going to our study introduction i'll go through the introduction then we can have a little bit of discussion and then we can go to our discussion part the sabbath rooted in the creation story holds timeless significance beyond its historical context Explored in this study are its origins, meaning, and contemporary relevance. Derived from the Hebrew word Shabbat, meaning cessation or rest. The Sabbath symbolizes God's example of rest for humanity. Embracing the Sabbath lessons in our hectic lives becomes an opportunity for rejuvenation. Emphasized in the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath signifies a covenant relationship between God and his people, embodying rest and worship. In the Jewish faith, the Sabbath is a day of rest and worship instituted by God for his people, following the biblical commandments in Exodus. Examining Exodus 31, 12 to 17 revealed the Shabbat, the Sabbath's immense importance to God, urging its observance by his people. So now let's look at what we have read. The the historical context or the historical um, context of Sabbath and its timeless relevance. You know, I can't count of so many um, um, medical research, scientific research, talking about uh, the brain, talking about our body, talking about the importance of rest, especially when it comes to the aspect of sleep how it helps our body to you know rejuvenate our brain to repair the worn out tissues and you know to you know perform optimally now these are medical research backed up used by you know it was kind of, it's not like ah there was one um um being maybe one being that we cannot see that started this uh, yes Let's be resting. Oh, there's no, there's no, okay, how do we back this up? Medically, it has been established that rest or sleep as whatever it may be applies to any one of us is very key to the performance of human beings. Even animals. Animals generally, and we knowing that, uh, you know, from our science field and everything, we say we are, we are higher animals and everything and everything. So, for every creation, there is a need for rest. And who made it so? The creator of heaven and the earth. So, Sabbath is not just a thing that God said, Oh, yeah, I rested. Thank God, everybody is fine. So, you guys are afraid you now. Go and do as you like. No. It holds a timeless relevance even till today in our life. So we are talking about, in this teaching, we'll be talking about the meaning, the root word and everything. And so I would like us to look at that Exodus chapter 2. Now, in that Exodus chapter 2, we all know that, um, let me retreat it again. The Old Testament is written originally in Hebrew language, while the New Testament is written originally in Greek. 
So, the word rest there is the Hebrew word Shabbat. S H A B A T H. And what does it mean? It means to cease, to desist, to rest, to cease. Cease means to, to stop temporarily. To cease means to stop temporarily. Mean to cut something from happening, to stop something from happening. There's a possibility that it can continue later, but as at that time it stopped. To rest, to desist, meaning to avoid, to stop doing something, to 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 bring to an end. Yes. So, like the word there says, to rest, desist from labor. So that is what. The word Shabbat means. Means. It means. So now we say embracing the Sabbath lesson in our hectic lives becomes an opportunity for rejuvenation. So it's not just because God has said rest and God is just saying that so that you can maybe say uh, you guys should lazy around. No, it's because there is a context to this. So you know, when you say rest, God is saying rest, and we are like, okay, rest and rest, rest, rest. It's because God worked. There wouldn't be any need for rest if there is no place of work. So, when we say rest, we are not talking about rest to encourage laziness or to encourage people being idle. No, it is needed for a man who has worked or any person who has worked at a particular time to take adequate rest, commensurate rest for the body to get back to its optimal performance level. So, emphasis in the Ten Commandments the sabbath signifies a convenient relationship between god and his people so we are not talking about any kind of people god and his people it is a convenient relationship between god and his people okay guys come i created the heavens and earth within six days and i rested on the seventh day i want you guys to take this cue and make sure you do this every day of your life so it is not just because you're going to, to encourage laziness. Okay, do what you want to do. Rest, whatever you like to do. No, it is so that we can take a cue from the Creator Himself. Rest is very important. It is very, as much as work is important, rest is very much important. Much more important. Some of us, when we look at our track record in our place of work, we, we glorify in the fact that we are always working. Ha! Hey, hey, my mom, if my manager is sleeping like this, I mean, go call. If there's anything, I mean, go call. If this thing is up. Yes, good. It's a good thing to deliver. But at what, at, at, at what exchange? What are you exchanging for that? Some of us don't even have any day of rest. Monday to Sundays, we are working. Especially some of us that works on, that works on shift. Even if you are working on shift, there is a particular day they will say, ah, even if you are working six days, this day will take a day of rest. Rest. And funniest thing is that even if they give some of us rest, days of rest, we will still be like, oh, I need money. I need to make this money. Ah, the way this world is going, we need money. Ah, money, 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 money. No. No, it is very paramount. It is very imperative for a man to rest after he has worked. In the Jewish faith, the Shabbat, the Shabbat is a day of rest and worship instituted by God for his people, following the biblical commandment in Exodus. So let's look at that book of Exodus, Exodus chapter 31. Exodus chapter 31. Exodus 31, verses 12 to 17. I'll read from here. Exodus chapter 31, 12 to 17. Reading from the King James Version. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. 14. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is only unto you. Every one that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work daring, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. <laughs> Verse 15. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, only to the Lord. Whosoever doth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Verse 16. 
Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. Verse 17, which is the last verse, says, It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. He rested and was refreshed. And so, you know, in, in our inquisitive mind or in our critical mind, we're like, okay, what was God resting from? What was God resting from? Was he like God say, Ah, my back is paining me? Ah, my leg go, oh, I don't try first six days, let me go and sleep. No, no. God created the heaven and the earth. And can we say that He has He continued resting He has continued resting from that day onward? No. It is important, it is to be a significance for the creations he has done. So man had already been created on the sixth day. If God had said, ah, keep working, man would have taken that cue from him and said, ah, okay, there's no rest. Let's just be working. But it was important to serve as a significant for man because he is not as empowered, he's not as powerful as God himself in, in making, in everything. And so there is a possibility that he may not be able to sustain that strength that God used. And he's still using it. So, you know, the Bible talks about those who wait upon the Lord, they will renew their strength, they will mount, you know, you mount like eagles and everything. You will, you know, wonderful things. Wonderful things. But the reality that God was made from the dust had already put into the equation a certain level of weakness. Yes. No, now let's look at our life. Even let's look at examples around us. People who were alcoholic. Hey, I will do this. I can do that. And we don't say that he dropped it. I'm like, ah, what happened? Eh, he had dry blood pressure. He didn't know. This happened. That happened. Man filled with so much weakness and God understanding this says no let me not show that uh, there's no need for rest these people will just keep working even even God showing that we needed rest are we still yielding to that now some of us is until maybe our partners our fathers our parents rest it's enough in the we say I me I need to make this money it's important there's no rest in this some of us we say there's no rest in this world for us you know, we subtly in the way to find to show us that we are working, we ended up causing ourselves. Rest. Rest. God, the creator of the universe, rested on the seventh day after working for six good days. So how much more we human beings? How much more we human beings? So it is very important. This is very significant for we children of God in this time. Let us not feel Whatever we are doing, God does not understand. So why can He be telling us to rest? God, you don't know as they go. I needed to rest too. This one that you are doing, eh? this one that you are saying, I should rest. Ah, where will I see the money? She be is even that itself. You know, money we are going to be spending. Spending. We have any? We have un unlimited excuses to justify our mode of stressing ourselves, using the resources God gave us, anyhow, maltreating ourselves abusing the grace God has given unto us. Oh, do you think our hands, our mind, our legs, our reasoning, whatever God has given to us, do you think it's, it's by our power that we are sustaining these things? No. No. It's not so. It's not so. So please, it is highly significant as a child of God that you understand that, yes, work hard, pray the Holy Ghost, fast and pray. But also, as you do that, put it at the back of your mind that you have a time of rest. There must be a time of rest. A time of rest. So, um, the Sabbath is very important to God. The Sabbath is very important to God. And God is urging us, observe it, rest. It's not for me. It's for you people. It's for us. Okay, if you rest on Sunday now, it's God now. And, hey, this is for rest, you know. Please well, help me go and tell them to go to work. No. And if you don't rest on Sunday, do you think God is going to be affected? God is not going to be affected. You know what God has said to you. You know how much God has promised you. Do you not want to live to see those things come to pass in this life? Sometimes, some of us, they have to threaten us to rest. If you don't rest, we will not pay your salary. If you don't rest, we will not take you to do this. We will not do this for you. And say, okay, I've read and so we are resting compulsorily, not because we decided to rest, but because there is this, 
there is a penalty for not resting. Of course, some of us they have too used to a toxic environment where they are calling you every day and night, even when you are not at work, they are calling you. Something is wrong, go somebody else uh, leg is paining anymore. So you that you are at home resting is the person that is fit to attend to that case. So it is very important for us as a child of God. It is very important to God that man rest. And as far as it is important to God, it must be important to man. It must be important to man. It's a covenant relationship between us and God. Yes, it's a covenant relationship. Don't think, ah, every time they are talking about praying the Holy Ghost, eh, praying tithes, offering, working in the, in the church of the Lord, everything. That is how it is a good thing to say. No, even your rest is a covenant between you and God. It is a covenant between you and God. It is a covenant between you and God to observe your rest part time. To maximize what God has given you. Your mind, your hands, your legs, everything that God has given unto you. And that you don't use it anyhow. You don't maltreat yourself. You don't abuse the things God has given unto you. May the Lord give us understanding in the name of Jesus. May we come into the rest of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Discussion. We are going to be having some discussions. So why did God rest on the seventh day? And uh, what example did God set in resting after days of work and what consequences are applying for those who break the Sabbath law? We've talked about this in reading, in our reading in the book of Exodus chapter 31, verse 12 to 17. You know, what, what, why did God rest on the seventh day? He, served, he rested to serve as a significance, to serve as a, a path for we humans to take. God is not weak. God is not tired. He is, he is everlasting. Do you hear that word? It will last forever. Everlasting. Meaning, God will last forever. When fathers of faith, then let everyone say sinners now. Apostle Jesus, Baba Jide is dead. Baba Jide is dead. Abu Jabba said, Abba is dead. Um, Ketukuman, dead. Ehale, dead. William Brown, they died. They are not everlasting. They are not. Fathers of faith are dying by Allah, Allah, uh, Allah were dead. They will go. You too. Sooner or later. So, God is everlasting. He is not tired. He can never be wearied. He did that to serve as a, as a path for us, man, that we can properly manage all that he has given unto us. We can't even comprehend the limits or the, the realm of what God is doing. We are saying 3D or 4D, 5D, whatever it is. Maybe it's 1 billion D God is working on. Somebody that has seen the beginning from the, he sees the end from the beginning. The Alpha Omega. He said, I am the beginning end. Beginning end. Meaning, me, I'm the, all of the things you guys are doing is in me. Timeline is in me. I created time. So it's everlasting. It's like that. Ah, 2000, we can say over 2,000 years ago now, Christ came to the world and died and everything. So now, just imagine somebody that has lived for 2,000 years. Let's just put, just imagine that for a bit. What is your age? 2024. I am 2024 years old. Just imagine that kind of a person. But now, God is unlimited eternity ever everlasting <laughs> you cannot be tired he did this for us that we can have a cue we can take a cue from him and properly manage all that he has given unto us and what are the what are the what are the significance what is the what is the consequences of it when you don't rest you are dying there is no big deal you know you say that verse 15 says six days may work be done but in the seventh is the sabbath day of rest only to the lord Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath, he shall surely be put to death. Even if that is not obtainable again in our days. Imagine somebody working every day. Every day. Every day. <laughs> it's not even later. So now the person will drop dead. Maybe the person just, you know, eat the leg on the stone and just fell down. So he, he was just going, you know, and he just fell down. And he had stroke. And this, he died. Pa. And I go, what happened? What happened? Rest, 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 rest. 
Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3, that we've read. Exodus 28 to 11. Exodus 31, 13 to 15. It says, What is the significance of the seventh day beyond the day after the sixth day of the week? What were the commandments given by God regarding the Sabbath observance at Mount Sinai? The, the, it is, it's not just that because seven comes after six. The significance of the seventh day is that it is the day God rested from his works. And it becomes very paramount, very imperative for we humans to take it as a cue to make sure that we rest after our days of work. That our seventh day is only unto the Lord, separated unto God for us to rest. It's not that God is the one resting on the seventh day. We are the one that has done the work. We are the one that we need to rest. We need to rest. So it's not just that after six days, eh, eh, no, 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 no. It's not just a day. It's just like every other day. But what makes it different was that God rested on that day. And the Bible says, and God blessed that day. That was Genesis chapter 2, verse 3 says, and God blessed the seventh day. So, so it, it was not because of anything, but in it, he rested. Yes. He rested. That day sounds as a day. That day commemorated the day God rested from his work. So it's not just that uh, it's a sixth day, after six day, God seventh day. No. It was a day God rested. It was a day God, and God told them, observe this, observe this in continuation. It is a covenant between me and you. Make sure you do this in time, every time, every time. Don't say, hey, let's just be working. Ah, we have not met up with the target. We need to do this. No, seven days is a day of rest. You will meet with the target next week. You will meet up with the target next week. But you need to rest. You need to rest. Three, what did the Sabbath signify, signify regarding God's desire for intimate relationship with his people? And what are the consequences of not observing it? What are the consequences of not, of not observing the, the, the Sabbath day? Deuteronomy 5.15 <coughs> Deuteronomy 5 Let's open our Bible to that place. Deuteronomy 5 Deuteronomy 5 Yeah Verse 15 says, And remember, and remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt, and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God commanded thee to keep the Sabbath day. To keep the Sabbath day. The Lord God commanded you, commanded me to keep the Sabbath day. Keep the Sabbath day. Children of God, let us learn to keep the Sabbath day. It is not a religious day. The, you know, the funniest thing is that when we look at the things that God tells us to do, we begin to say, what is God, why is God telling me this? Why is he telling me this? No, it is because of us, because of me and you. Oh, keep working. Don't rest. Ah. Keep working. Like the Yoruba people will say, it's in your body. Keep working. Work day and night. Go and make the money. Go and make the money. Yes. Well, nobody says don't work hard. Nobody says don't put in your best. Nobody says don't. Six days. <laughs> you have six days to, to rot everything, to scatter everywhere, to arrange everywhere, to meet up with your target. One day of rest, let it not be something difficult for you to do. For yourself and for your life. For yourself and for your life. Your relationship between God's people and God himself. Say what I did for you. In the when you were in slavery, eh? the Egyptians were using you anyhow. There was no day of rest. You guys, you guys did not eh? rest. Kept. Slavery. Slavery is not the good thing. You served as if you were. So many of them would have died in the land of Egypt. So many. So many. No rest. You know. And when Moses came, ah. Every time Moses comes, they always add more to their work. So you guys are you guys are joking. It's because you have time now. That's why you can go and say you want to go. Go where? Maybe that they were supplying them some stuff to add to encourage their work. Say no, you guys now don't be looking for your straws and everything you're using to work by yourself. You wanted to die there. No rest at all. No rest at all. Yes. So it is important. It is important for us. Why is it important for God's people to rest and refrain from work on the Sabbath? And now does it function as a perpetual covenant 
Exodus chapter 23, verse 12, Exodus 31, 16. Those are the places we've read. Read that Exodus chapter 31, verse 16 previously. And I just want us to dwell that where we are going to be dwelling so much today. Very, very important. Exodus chapter 31, verse 16. 31, 16 says, Wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. So I want you guys to rest. I want you guys to be, you know, to be at your best. So for me to continually lay hold of this in your life, that I can continually count on this, that you will do this. Make sure you do this every day of your life. Generations must call, keep obtaining this. You must keep observing this. You must keep observing this. Yes. It must, you must keep up to observing this. It's important. It's important in our service unto the Lord and to ourselves that we take our rest very serious. It is a commandment. God commanded it. So, whatever you want, if you have arguments, go to God and say, God, I'm not resting now. I'm sure you say, okay. But it's a commandment and it is needed for us to rest. To rest. How did Jesus relate to the concept of the Sabbath? And what correction did he make regarding the Sabbath? And why? Why? Why did he make the correction? Matthew chapter 20, Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. I'll be reading from here. Matthew chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. At that time, Jesus went to the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were hungered, hungered. And began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. Let's remember Exodus chapter 31. You understand? Exodus chapter 23. Yes, the Deuteronomy chapter um Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 15. God was telling them of you must observe the Sabbath day, you must rest, no walking and everything. You cannot do anything on that day. You just have to rest. And now they are coming to him. Huh. Hey. Verse 3 he said, But he said unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was an hungry? And they. Excuse me. And they. That were with him. How he entered into the house of God and did eat the shoe bread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests. Verse 5. Or have you not read in the law how that on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meant, I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Ye would not have condemned the guiltless. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. You know, the, the major problem there was because they do not have the understanding of who Jesus Christ was. And so they felt, no, 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 you are, you, you are just like ordinary man, be like every one of us. How can your disciples? How can they be plucking corn here? How can, how can they even think of eating on the Sabbath day? Hmm. But Jesus Christ quickly reminded them what David did. Nobody killed David then, no. Because it was on the Sabbath day. He came into the temple of the Lord, in the house of the Lord, and they picked the shoe bread. They ate, first time at 21. They ate. And they, what? they were filled. And they were filled. And Jesus Christ was telling them, See, I am... The Son of Man is even the Lord, even of the Sabbath day. So, you cannot say because we ate on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was created for man, not man for the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day was created for man to rest, <coughs> excuse me, to, to restrengthen himself, to, you know, rejuvenate his system and everything. So that he can optimally and better serve his creator. So now, if we in our own mode, in our own effort to do that, we are hungry and we have to eat. And you guys got angry because we ate. You see? 
that is the issue of religiosity that a lot of us we we would feel now nah, it's not supposed to be yes he said but i say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple jesus christ was talking about himself i am greater than the temple david entered the temple with his followers ate picked the shrewd bread which it was not lawful for him yes only for the priest but jesus christ said me i'm greater than the temple and so my disciples are allowed to eat on the sabbath day i am the lord of the sabbath i can tell them to eat now it is no longer about what has been written but now i have i am the fulfillment of all that has been written i am your rest so christ needed to clarify that in their mind so that you will not go about oh you see somebody that is sick on the sabbath day i say ah you cannot work oh, if you like you should die on the sabbath day no accident happened and you're like ah, on the sabbath day eh, it will be fine but on the sabbath we cannot work no 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 according to jesus what was the intended purpose of the sabbath and what did he declare about his rule in relation to it verse 8 says for the son of man he is lord even of the sabbath day mark 2 27 let's read that please mark 2 verse 27 mark chapter 2 verse 27 we're going to read that please to so back up what we read in the book of matthew chapter 12 Mark 2 27. Yes. 20, 21 to 20. And he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. I just said that right now. He said, Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So, looking at it now, but let's just take a little step backward when we're asking that what is the significance of the Sabbath and everything. It was created for man, man, to rest, to get better, to feel better. To, to, to re-strategize, to rejuvenate, to get back to an optimal position. Not that man was made for the Sabbath, no. So, it is very important. The purpose of the Sabbath is that it was created for man to rest, to be better, to re-strategize, to, to, to replenish himself. It is not just a day where everybody just sit down idly and just be looking and ah somebody's dying there while and tribulation is happening there you know concern you because you are on your sabbath no no the sabbath was created for man yes and the role of christ in it is that he's even the lord of the sabbath he has brought our rest he has brought our rest how did jesus respond to sabbath breaking accusations what did he emphasize and how did the sabbath change for the christian in the new testament in what way did he amend the traditional understanding of the sabbath laws like we read in that book of matthew mark 2 27 to 28 that verse 20 verse 20 um 28 says therefore the son of man is lord also of the sabbath mark 12 the place we read let's read that verse 9 mark 12 verse 9 to 14 mark 12 9 to 14 verses 9 to 14 says and when he was departed thence, he went into their synagogue. And behold, there was a man which had his hand withered. And they asked him, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath days that they might accuse him? Now, this is somebody that is dying, you know, and they're asking him, is it, is it right for us to be healing people on the Sabbath day? But God said we should not do anything on Sabbath day. Agree, Dabi. But the reason why they're asking is not because they want the person that has a withered hand, for how many years it might have been, to be set free. They want to use that important life to accuse Jesus and he said unto them what man shall there be among you that shall have one sheep and if it fall into a pit on the Sabbath day will he not lay hold unto it and lift it out hmm. God was comparing Christ here is comparing the, 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 the role of the shepherd to what he was about to do he said how much more then is a man better than a sheep Wherefore it is lawful to do well on the Sabbath days. Then he said to the man, Stretch forth thy hand, and he stretched forth, and he stretched it forth, and it was restored old, like as the other. Then the Pharisees went out and had a counsel against him how they might destroy him. So they feel the Sabbath day, God said, No, no, don't work on the Sabbath day. And then they took it extra mile. Say, even good things don't do it on the Sabbath day. So God is not asking them, Christ is asking them here. If you are a shepherd, as a shepherd, or any one of you that are asking me questions, you are maybe your 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 sheep 
fell into a ditch on the Sabbath day. Will you leave it there? And it's to show that, you know, in those days, they have, you know, their major duty, their major work was agriculture, farming. And their, cut, their, their livestock is a very important aspect of their culture. Very important. Very key to their economy. And God is just is asking them now. So if this thing that seems very important to you, that you can even, you know, whatever it is, if you fell into a ditch, will you not pick it out on the Sabbath and not say, ah, God, I forgive me, this Sabbath day, I, I, it's for good things. Now, you don't want this person to be healed because you believe the Sabbath day is a day where nothing should be done. But, you know, like Bible recorded, they were not asking because they wanted to know. They were asking because they were looking for something against him and he healed a man. So what has this one signifies to us today? It's signifying that the Sabbath is a day to really serve God totally. It's a day that is set apart for God to serve God totally. To serve God totally. Christ had to amend this in their tradition. Don't go about saying people dying left and right and saying, I say, it's a Sabbath day, whatever is happening to them is none of my business. No! No, it is your business as a Christian, as a child of God. You cannot say, okay, let me, okay, me, I'm not involved, though. I cannot be involved in all of this. No, it is very important that we understand that this is to help us to be a better ambassador, an effective ambassador of the kingdom of God in these times. So, yes, it was very important. God had to emphasize, Christ had to emphasize it. Change this, oh. this cannot continue. It is not God's will that... People die. Things go bad on the Sabbath day. If there's anything you need to do to make sure that there is rest, there is peace on the Sabbath day, do it. But not to not abuse it and then you start going to farm, going to do all of this, and there is no longer regard for the Sabbath day. No. It's a day of rest and prosperity. So how did the apostles, including Paul, view the Sabbath in the New Testament? And what significant shift occurred after the crucifixion concerning the Sabbath? Acts chapter 13. The book of Acts, chapter 13. The book of Acts, chapter 13, verse 42 to 44. 42 to 44. Acts, chapter 13, verse 42 to 44. And it says, And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came, almost the whole city together, and the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. So it was not like, ah, this is not the day we are not to do anything. They used the Sabbath day to preach the gospel, to bring people to the kingdom of light. Take them out of their darkness. Set the captives free. The kingdom of, 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 of God is, is, is important for us to populate it. Even on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is even meant for the work of the kingdom. So that's why some of us, we go to church to serve God, to praise the name of the Lord. So it is biblically backed up. Yes. It is not a religious day. Hey, everybody, stay at home. Don't do anywhere. No. It is a day to propagate the gospel. To tell people about Christ, to tell people the people about the kingdom of God, and to bring people souls into the kingdom. This was the view of the apostles. How did the early Christians observe the Sabbath, and why did they gather on the first day of the week? What significance does the New Testament place on the Lord's Day? Romans Act twenty-seven, Act chapter twenty, verse seven. Verse seven it says, and upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them ready to depart on the morrow and continue his speech until midnight it was a day of fellowship a day of fellowship coming together to share the word of the lord to learn at the feet of god to pray to seek the lost face so these were the view and the duties of the early christians as regarding the sabbath that oh it's a day to rest to serve the name of the lord to, to seek God's face, to worship, you know, a day of rest and worship unto the name of the Lord. Read Hebrews 4, 9 to 11. How does the Sabbath rest find its fulfillment in Christ? And how does it remain relevant for Christians today? Let's open our Bible to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11. The 
book of Hebrews chapter 11 verse what verses Hebrews chapter 4 excuse me verses 9 to 11 there remained therefore a rest to the people of God for he that is entered into his rest he also had ceased from his own works and as God did from his let us labor therefore to enter into that rest lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief so when we look at the 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 the, the, the account in the genesis verse you know first day second day third day god walked yeah. and god apples the writer of hebrew is telling us today is telling us today let us labor let us enter yes that means first second day sixth day do all the work that on the seventh day you can enter into the rest of christ that even while you are here and talking about there remain therefore a rest to the people of God meaning by the time this is done with that while we are a believer here we still go to our place of work every day we still make sure that we take our rest on the seventh day but there remain a rest for the people of God it's not for the world it's for the people of God as many as received him to then give power to become to become the sons of God there remain a rest for the children of God to reign with him forever. In that place, there is no work. There is no one, two, three, four, five, six day of work anymore. Eternal rest forever. And even in this world that we are, when we come into Christ, we enter into our rest. We are no longer perturbed by the things that is happening in the world. We are encouraged by time. We have hope. We have hope that everything will work out for our good. Eyes have not seen. Yes, I have not heard. Neither has it come to the top of man. What God has prepared for those that love him. That even while we are in this callous and wicked world, the Lord is our rest, our anchor. Our anchor, our rest. And he says, that verse says, For he that is entered into his rest, he also assists from his own works, as God did from his. Genesis. God ceased. So when you enter into Christ, you enter into rest. You cease from laboring, from toiling, from every body. Say, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Say, that I will give you rest. Say, my body is light. Yes. My body is light. Yes. The body of the Lord is light. You come into rest when you come into Christ. You will come into rest when you come to Christ. Yes. This is the significance for us today. Today. The, 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 the rest that is coming. The, the, that place that Christ is taking us to. He said, I go now to prepare a place, a place for you. That wherever I might be, you will be there with me forever. Forever. That is our eternal rest. So, it's, uh, the, the writer of the book of Hebrews is encouraging us. Labor now. This is the time to work. To put in your best. And I pray the Lord will strengthen us all in the name of Jesus. The grace and the, ten, the tenacity, the, the strength to go all out for God till the end. And to enter into our rest. That rest that the Bible promised us, that Jesus Christ promised us. May the Lord release it unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Lastly, said, how do Isaiah chapter 66 verse 22 to 23, Hebrews 4, 4 to 9, where we just read 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter 3 8, Revelation 24, anticipate the celebration of Sabbath in the future, particularly during the millennium. There will no longer be trouble. Revelation 24. Let's read that, please. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. One minute, please. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. It says, and I saw thrones and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of men, of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. A thousand years. That, that day, millennium is going to be a time of rest for the children of God. Yet they will no longer be crying, there will no longer be death, there will no longer be troubles, there will no longer be calamity, there will no longer be chaos, but to rest. Rest forever. Rest forever. Forever and ever. In conclusion, 
The Sabbath is significant for believers, rooted in creation and the Old Testament covenant. Christians may not have to observe a specific day, but rest, reflection, and worship are still important. The Sabbath points to Christ as the source of rest, inviting believers to experience God's rest through faith. In today's busy world, the Sabbath reminds us of the value of rest and renewal. By embracing the Sabbath, believers find physical rest and a deeper connection with their Creator. Ultimately, the Sabbath is a gift to rest in God's presence and celebrate His work in our lives. The Sabbath is what is a gift to rest in God's presence and celebrate His work in our lives. So if you are not there, please get there. Get to rest. Get to rest. Come into the boat. Come into the fold. Come into the fold. Come into Christ. There is rest over here. I can guarantee you there is rest over here. So, you know, when we look at the stress a lot of us go through, and maybe we are able to taste a little bit of rest on some other days, and we look at, oh, can my life just be like this? That is what God is calling you into. Rest. Totally, that there, there is nothing that scares you. There is nothing that unsettles you. You have confidence in Christ that everything will be sorted. That there is nothing that we that we, that the Lord cannot settle for you. That there is nothing beyond His capacity to do. That there is nothing that the God, that the Lord of Lords cannot settle in your life. There is nothing. Yes, we are inviting you today. Come into rest. Come and rest. Enough of toiling. Enough of stressing. Enough of being run, of running from one point to another looking for solution where there is none. In God is the, in the solution you are looking for. Is in God. Is in God. Is in God. I want us to pray. I want us to pray this prayer. Father, you will help me. I believe you are praying. Father, you will help my life. I have toyed, Lord. I have toyed. I have labored. I have labored, Lord. Help me to come into your rest, Father. I believe you are praying. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you will help me. Help me to come into your rest, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Say, pray for the grace to better appreciate God's purpose for creating the Sabbath for our rest. Yes. I want us to pray. Grace to better appreciate to ever appreciate God for creating Sabbath for our rest. Father, we pray, Lord Jesus, the grace to keep appreciating you for the Sabbath, O oh Lord. The grace, Lord, we pray for grace in our life to keep appreciating you for our rest, O oh Lord. In the name of Jesus, Lord, and grace us, help us, give us the grace to keep appreciating you in every facet of our life, in our life, in everything we do. In the name of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Three. The so Lord never let me never to abuse the Sabbath you have graciously given to me. <laughs> I believe you are praying. Help me to never abuse the Sabbath you have graciously given to me, Lord. Help me not to abuse it, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, you will have, you will help me, Lord. Help me not to abuse it, Lord. To abuse the Sabbath, Father, help me. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Abba, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Father, we thank you for this time. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your word. Thank you for Sabbath. Thank you for your rest. Thank you for the eternal rest that you have prepared for us. And thank you. Thank you for having us at the back of your mind. Thank you for thinking consistently about us. And for creating the Sabbath for our rest. Be exalted, O Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for everyone watching me at this time and for every one of us. The Christ Apostolic Church grace with Digital Church family as a whole. Help us to appreciate your rest. Help us to appreciate all the resources you have given unto us to live a life of peace and joy. In the name of Jesus. And for as many that have not yet entered into your rest, Father. Help us to enter into your rest, O oh Lord. Help us to enter into your rest, Father. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And the eternal rest, take us there, Lord. Help us to reign with you in that final place, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Abba Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. 
I want to thank every one of us for staying true and true. Thank you for joining today. We love you. Please stay tuned. Be there. Be focused. Be committed. And I can guarantee you that the Lord will take you higher and will bring you to his rest in Jesus' name. God bless you. Are you in search of a church that's youth-focused? Welcome to Christ Apostolic Church Graceville, where your expectations turn into tangible manifestations. We are a church with a divine mandate to raise generals in all fields of life. Our community is divided into two branches, the digital church and the physical church. The digital church congregation meets on the last Sunday of every month on various social media platforms. On the other hand, the physical church is nestled in the heart of Abuja and meets every Sunday at 9 in the morning at the Dubai International Market, Games Village, Abuja. Take note that Bible study happens every Tuesday from 7 to 8 in the evening across all our social media platforms. For those seeking a refreshing and engaging discussion, join us on Couch Fridays. These enlightening sessions happen every second and fourth Friday on Twitter Spaces at 7 in the evening. Remember, you are our greatest publicity agent. E-flyers are readily available across all our social media handles. Don't forget to bring someone along to the next service. If you need to talk to someone, our set man is available every Thursday. You can book a slot with him through our website, pourout.cacgraceville.org. Are you in need of prayers? Our prayer request form is available on our website, praywithme.cacgraceville.org. If you have a testimony to share, please send it to our dedicated email address, which is td at cacgraceville.org. As for tithes and offerings, they can be sent to our church account. We have accounts for both Naira and USD. The account name is Christ Apostolic Church, Graceville. For Naira account, please send to 10250 Bank is UBA. For USD, please send to 30036551512. Bank is also UBA. To stay updated, follow us across all social media platforms. Any additional announcements will be given by the pastor before the grace. In summary, remember our Bible study sessions, Couch Fridays, and the availability of our set man for a chat every Thursday. Don't forget to send in your tithes and offerings and follow us on all our social media platforms. Thank you for choosing Christ Apostolic Church Graceville. Your expectations will indeed become manifestations.